MGM Kerkorian City Center Quid Quo Pro. The recession that began in 2008 was especially hard on Nevada and Las Vegas with 13% unemployment and accurate predictions that no new major casino properties would be built for 10 years. For this reason, the completion of MGM's city center complex, thrown into doubt by the collapse of its Dubai partner and a potential default on $1.2 billion in finishing loans, spurred Harry Reid to action. Reid personally phoned bank CEOs, supposedly to attempt to save an estimated 40,000 jobs. A darker interpretation is that Reid squeezed banks to bail out his longtime friend and major donor, Kirk Kerkorian, in a quid quo pro that had nothing to do with the well-being of Nevadans. Reid became acquainted with Kerkorian as an attorney representing the businessman's brother, Nish Kerkorian, in the 1960s and 70s. In many ways, Kirk Kerkorian made Harry Reid. MGM Mirage chairman and chief executive officer Jim Murin was featured on Harry Reid's campaign ads of 2010, saying Harry called all the banks to save the construction of the city center resort. My darkest days in my professional career were this year, and it was all about city center. The nation's biggest construction project, 10,000 construction workers, 12,000 permanent jobs, and when it looked like city center was going to shut down, Harry Reid stepped up. That man called every CEO of every bank that I know and said, look, this is important to my state. Get it done. Now we're going to open up City Center in December. We're going to employ over 12,000 people. They would not have jobs today if it not for Senator Reid. As Senate leader, Harry Reid's working to get our economy back on track, passing clean energy tax credits that will create 41,000 Nevada jobs, over 100 million to keep Nevada police on the beat and teachers in the classroom, and saving city center. There's no one else that could have done that. Some said I shouldn't have pushed so hard, but with 20,000 jobs at stake, I'd do it all over again. Harry Reid, determination that makes a difference. I'm Harry Reid, and I approve this message. If Murin was correct and Reid's efforts single-handedly saved city center, both he and Reid are essentially caught in a catch-22 of admitting corruption. Other than the culinary union, Nevada citizens were never endeared to Harry Reid. So funding by the MGM and Kerkorian was critical to his political and personal financial survival. As Senate Majority Leader, Reid would have had inordinate influence in pressuring banks for loans, given the huge amount of bailout money then being provided in late 2008 by the TARP funds, in itself a form of fraud. An even more serious concern is that the MGM isn't a normal business, but a gaming enterprise. As a former gaming commissioner, Harry Reid surely should have known that by soliciting funds for MGM and City Center, he became an active partner in a gaming enterprise. The surprisingly untouched question is whether Reid fell under gaming laws requiring the divulging of personal relationships, especially if those personal relationships included having been a lifelong lawyer for the Kerkorians. Mobsters like the Kansas City Sevilla crime family went to jail for similar influence, just their skin wasn't cloaked as campaign donations. And why would Reed go out of his way for this one city center property, especially considering the large 50% ownership interest of Dubai World, many other major multi-million and billion dollar Las Vegas projects like Echelon and Fountain Blue also went belly up in 2009. So why didn't Reed move mountains to protect these projects with insider loans, especially since Reed's calls could be viewed as an illegal attempt to shake banks down. Moreover, MGM's half-partner in city center, Dubai World, was also then in a state of financial collapse, purportedly in the neighborhood of $60 billion. Dubai World, the investment arm of the Persian Gulf Emirate, invested almost $6 billion into MGM Mirage in August 2007 to acquire 50% of the $8.5 billion city center project and about 9.9% of MGM Mirage's common stock. So one could view Reed's efforts as being part of a bailout of Dubai at Americans' expense. But it gets worse. Reed theoretically needed a gaming license as a fundraiser for the MGM. This is especially important because one of the MGM's partners was unlicensable and linked to Chinese mob triads. MGM Mirage knowingly signed on an unfit partner as it tried to gain a foothold in Macau after Chinese officials denied it a license in the fast-growing gambling mecca. New Jersey's Division of Gaming Enforcement reported, quote, From the beginning of its efforts to enter Macau, MGM pursued partnerships with persons that it knew were associated with those aspects of gaming in Macau most heavily penetrated by organized crime, unquote. 
MGM Mirage's joint venture partner in Macau was Macau casino heiress Pansy Ho. She was considered an unsuitable person because of her tight business relationship with her father, Stanley Ho. Stanley Ho once held the casino monopoly in Macau and ran offshore gambling, drugs, and prostitution with numerous ties to organized crime. MGM's partnership with Pansy Ho eventually cratered their planned expansion at Borgata Hotel, Casino, and Spa in the Atlantic City. Before New Jersey reached any findings in its investigation into Ho's suitability, MGM pulled out, putting its 50% Borgata ownership into a fund controlled by a trustee. So, Kirk Kerkorian was in dire straits in late 2008 and early 2009, having lost billions by buying Ford stock and because of the downturn in fortunes of the MGM in a faltering economy. The criminal backgrounds of partners Stanley Ho and Pansy Ho were also being exposed, so they no doubt were putting the screws to Kerkorian. Certainly, Dubai World knew that it was a, in trouble well before its $60 billion crash in late 2009. Kerkorian could have lost it all. Thus, when Harry Reid bragged about saving City Center, was he most interested in saving 40,000 jobs for Nevadans or in saving the investment of his former client and friend, Kirk Kerkorian? Not only was the MGM and its affiliates Reid's largest donor, past tense, but they are still funding his retirement parachute to the present, even after Kerkorian's death. MGM has long been a sponsor of the Clean Energy Summit, which we show has been corrupted by political payoffs to renewable energy companies and a Reid piggy bank. But MGM has also funded Reed's retirement in the form of a policy institute slash slush fund being created at the University of Nevada, Las Vegas, in partnership with former House Speaker John Boehner. Compensation is rumored to be substantial. Kirk Kerkorian died in 2016 at 98 years old. On Kerkorian's passing, Senator Harry Reid of Nevada eulogized Kerkorian from the Senate floor. Last night at 10.30. Uh, my friend, Kirk Korean, died. What a wonderful human being. 98 years old. And when the history books are written, they'll say a lot about this good man. I had the good fortune, as a young lawyer, to meet him. I, Miss President, didn't do any of his mergers and acquisitions and all the stock stuff. I didn't do any of that. Um, but when I met him, he didn't need that. When we first met, he was um, a businessman with an airline called Transnational Airlines. <clears throat> I kept in touch with him all these many years. And as I said, I'm not going to boast about all the great legal work I did for Kirk Kikoyan. I didn't do much. But I did do a lot of work for his brother, a man by the name of Nish Kerkorian. And Kirk never forgot. Certainly, Harry Reid has much to thank Kirk Kerkorian for, and MGM as well. What is left out of Reid's Kerkorian eulogy is Kerkorian's possible early links to the Mafia. According to an FBI informant, Genovese capo Matty Ionello was a hidden partner of billionaire investor Kirk Kerkorian. Matthew, Matty the horse Ionello, powerful capo of the Genovese family who controlled gay bars, ran gambling junkets, and trafficked illicit drugs in New York, was a friend and hidden partner of Kirk Kerkorian, according to an FBI informant. In a 1973 memo to the FBI, the informant advised that Ionello is a friend and hidden partner of Kirk Kerkorian, the head of Tracy Investments Corporation, and the largest stockholder of Metro, Metro Goldwyn Mayer stocks. Kerkorian is allegedly planning to build a large casino hotel in Las Vegas to be called the Grand Hotel. Making this more belie believable is that Ionello also had ties to Willie Cohen and Jack Gordon at the Circus Circus Casino, friends of Tony the Ant Spilatro.